Thank you so much. Please be seated. Well, good morning, everyone, and Merry Christmas to you today. It's so good to see you today. We want to welcome you to First Baptist Church. We are so thankful that you've chosen to join us this morning here in person or out there watching online today as we've come to celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. What a wonderful, beautiful day it is to be in the Lord's house worshiping Him and the opportunities that are before us today. I hope that when you came in, you picked up a candle. Uh, If you didn't do that, you probably are going to need one by the end of the service. And uh, so please make sure sometime during the service that you take care of that and get that picked up. If you need some upstairs in the balcony, there should be some uh, right there at the sound booth for you to get. Let me say this. If you're here today and you're a guest, we are so glad to have you at First Baptist Church. We do have a number of guests today. Some of you are here visiting with family. Some of you are from our community in the area, and you're here as our guest today. We are so glad that you are here. We want to say to all of our guests and all of our members, if you would this morning, I want you to take out your smartphone or your device. Go to fbclexington.com and go to Sunday Central. We want everyone to do this. I ought to see the glow of your face even now. And uh, I mean, I see it when I'm preaching, so I ought to at least be able to see it while we're doing the welcome, right? So if you would, uh, check in this morning. Let us know that you're here. If you're a guest, fill out all the information and hit submit so that I can send you a letter this week and we can let you know how thankful we are that you are here. And I want to encourage you to do that. Also there, there's announcements. Also, uh, you can give online. One of the ways that you, many ways that you can give here at the church is to give right there online at Sunday Central. Or you can also give uh, by way of the offering plates that are passed, the receptacles in the back as you leave today. Uh, You can mail that in. But I just want to remind you that the last end of the year gift has to be given by December the 27th to count on the 2022 church year. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. And so we are thankful that all of you are here today. Uh, I'm going to ask our guys if you would come forward now uh, with our offering plates, and we're going to be receiving our morning offering today. Uh, Several of you have asked. Uh, Our goal for the Lottie Moon Christmas offering was $20,000. We have surpassed that already just a little bit, and so we praise the Lord for that. We want to continue to give to that throughout the Christmas season as we have the opportunity to do so, all right? So we are thankful for that. Our ushers are going to come forward this morning, and as they come forward, I'm going to ask you to stand again with us today to receive our offering, and we're also, in just a moment, going to be reading Scripture together. Let's pray today. Bless all those areas that it will reach. Thank you again for this day. We thank you for the service we're about to have. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Merry Christmas. Please join me as we share in the reading of God's word. So her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. But after he had considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, the son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. See, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him which is translated, God is with us, Matthew 1, 19 through 23.
What a great morning for us to be together today to worship the Lord Jesus. Amen? We've come to celebrate the Lord and who He is today. And I want you to look in your Bible in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. We're going to read that together in just a moment. Today we not only celebrate the birth of our Savior, but we also come together today to also remember the purpose for His coming into the world. And therefore we remember His death, burial, and resurrection. We must not ever forget on this Christmas day that the reason Jesus was born was so that Jesus could die on the cross of Calvary for our sins. Today, I want us to read this scripture passage together. It's up on the screen right here in Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 10 and verse 11. Read this out loud together with me right now this morning. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today a Savior, who is Messiah the Lord, was born for you in the city of David. What I want us to do for just a couple of minutes this morning is I want us to look at this passage of Scripture. And I want us to see how it quickly applies to our lives this morning, draws us to the Lord, and then we're going to have a time of invitation with the opportunity to do what the angels ask the shepherds to do, to come and see Jesus. And then after our time of invitation, we will participate in the candlelight service together. In this passage of Scripture this morning, there are several key truths about Jesus' coming that first Christmas that I want you to notice as it applies to us today. First, I want you to see that Jesus' coming was personal. It was personal. The angel said, I proclaim to you good news of great joy. I proclaim to you good news of great joy. The message of Christ's coming is first and foremost a personal message for you and me today. You've got to understand. You've got to come to grasp today that if you were the only person on this planet, Jesus still would have come into this world just for you. <coughs> that is how personal Christmas really is. Jesus came for you personally, individually. That's how Christ came. This would have been life-altering news for those shepherds on that hillside. For those lonely, outcast shepherds. This news that Jesus is coming was personal. Literally changed everything for their life. No one saw them for who they were and what they really were. They just had this stigma about them, this outcast stigma. No one wanted to be around them. No one wanted to be their friend. No one wanted them in worship. No one invited them to their house. And yet, it was to them personally that the angel of glory came and announced the birth of Jesus. How wonderful, how valuable, how special they must have felt to realize that the Messiah, the one promised for so long, had come for them personally. <coughs> 
how life-changing it can be for you and me today if we will ever come to the understanding that Jesus' coming was personal. It was for you and me. So Jesus' coming was personal. Not only that, Jesus' coming was also for all people. For all people. The angel said, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Now, while it is certainly life-changing to know that Jesus came for me personally and for you personally, we must never forget that all people are important to God. Every person of every race, of every nationality, of every demographic, of every place in the world is important to Jesus. Just this morning, I received a message from a pastor in Kenya telling me Merry Christmas. This morning, I received a message from a pastor in Brazil telling me Merry Christmas. This morning, I received a message from a pastor in Zambia telling me Merry Christmas. This morning, I received a message from a pastor in Pakistan telling me Merry Christmas. It did not matter what part of the world they were in. They all had the same message. Merry Christmas because Jesus Christ has come. How exciting. To know that Jesus came for me and you personally. But he came for all people. That that message of Jesus is coming, this good news of great joy, not only has it been shared to us, but it has been shared throughout the world. And you and I, as the people of God, have a responsibility to continue to share this message to all people. This good news must be shared across the street. This good news must be shared across the states. This good news must be shared by us across the seas this is our lord's command for us and as we enter into a brand new year of 2023 we must be mindful that all around us every moment of every day are people who must hear the good news of jesus christ that message that we are to share is an important message First, it is a message of hope. If ever there was a message for our world today, it is the message that Jesus Christ came to give you hope. We live in a very hopeless world where people are seeking something different. And what they're seeking cannot be found in this world. It can only be found in the person of Jesus Christ our Lord. In Jesus, there is hope. That's the message. In Jesus, there is help. That is the message. People need help. I need help. You need help. We all need help. And the only one who can really help us is Jesus. Hope, help. But there's something else that we desperately need right now in our world, and that's healing. It's a message of healing. I'm not just talking about physical healing. I'm talking about the kind of healing that only Jesus can bring. The kind of healing that brings peace to our hearts and to our minds. The kind of healing that brings peace in families. Peace across racial lines. Peace across denominations. The kind of peace that Jesus brings when he comes into our life as he came into our world. You see, Jesus' coming changed everything. Jesus' coming was personal. Jesus' coming was for all people. Thirdly, Jesus' coming is prophetic. Prophetic. Today, a Savior who is Messiah the Lord was born for you in the city of David. 
You see, Jesus is not just any Jewish baby who was born. Jesus is the promised Messiah come into this world. The Old Testament prophesied that the Messiah would be born, but not only that, but that he would be born of a virgin and would be born in Bethlehem, the city of David. We read in Luke 2, 4 through 7, And Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he's of the house and the family line of David, to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in cloth and laid him in a feeding trough because there was no room for them in the end of the lodging place. Jesus Christ's coming, listen, fulfilled in that moment every single Old Testament prophecy, perfectly fulfilled every Old Testament prophecy of the coming Messiah in that one moment. God's plan of redemption that was put in place in the Garden of Eden was being fulfilled. Jesus Christ came right on time. I want you to understand this morning that the coming of Jesus is prophetic not just in the first century, but in the 21st century. Jesus came right on time then, and I want you to understand this morning, that same Jesus will be right on time for you right now, this morning. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, I want you to know, Jesus will show up for you right on time. Not a minute too early. And not a minute too late. Just trust Him. Jesus' is coming is personal. His coming is for all people. Jesus' is coming is prophetic. One final quick thing before our time of invitation. Jesus' is coming is powerful. It's powerful. Today... A Savior who is Messiah the Lord was born for you. That's the key word in the entire passage. Today, a Savior. A Savior. What we needed more than anything else in our life was a Savior. We did not need a life coach. We did not need a religious leader or more religion. We did not need a great leader or a great teacher. When Jesus came, he brought what we needed most Someone who could save us from our sin and ourselves. A Savior who is Christ the Lord. The one thing we could never provide ourselves on this earth. A Savior. A Savior had come. To save us from ourselves and our sins and our mistakes, and our failures. God sent Jesus, the Savior, the perfect sacrifice for sin. The angel said to Joseph in Matthew 1, 20 and 21, Joseph's son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus. Because 
he will save his people from their sins. This is the powerful, life-changing, simple message of Christmas. That no matter who we are, no matter what we've done, no matter where we've come from or where we are headed, we can be saved from our sins and ourselves. And we can have the assurance of eternal life in heaven because Jesus came. No wonder the angel said, it's good news of great joy. Then the, the angel said something else to the shepherd. He said, go, go and find this one named Jesus. And the Bible says that the shepherds left immediately without excuse. And they came to the place where Jesus lay. And they found it was just as the angel said. And the Bible said it was such a life-changing experience. They left praising God and telling everyone what they had seen and experienced. Now listen to me. The invitation of the angel to the shepherds is the same invitation for you and me this morning. Leave wherever you are, wherever you find yourself, in whatever situation, whatever circumstance it may be, leave that place right now and go and experience Jesus Christ for yourself. Whatever you're going through, go and experience Jesus. Because in His presence, everything changes for you. So this morning, the presence of the Lord Jesus is here right now. We're going to have a time of invitation. I want to invite you right here on the very last Sunday of this year, on the very Sunday that we celebrate the birth of Christ, I want to invite you to come. Come as a believer to this altar and thank God for your salvation, for your forgiveness of sins, to come and, and recommit your life to the Lord today as we come to the end of a year and begin a new year. I want to invite you to come and join this church. So many of you are here and you've been a guest for a while and you've been telling me, Pastor, I want to join. Pastor, we're going to join. Well, what better day to come and do that than right here on Christmas Day? But some of you are here and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Oh, you know about Him. You've heard the stories. You've seen the pictures. You've read the scriptures. You've even sung the songs. But there's never been a time in your life when you humbled your heart and asked Jesus to truly forgive your sins, mistakes, and failures and ask Him to be the Lord, the boss of your life where He could take control of you. Jesus is the greatest Christmas gift of all. What greater gift could you receive today than the forgiveness of your sins, eternal life, and heaven right now this morning come we'll be here to receive you we'll pray with you we'll encourage you we'll answer your questions whatever it is the lord calls you to come let's pray together father in the quietness of this moment we thank you for your many blessings we thank you for the simplicity of your word and how it so clearly speaks to us as to how you came but more importantly, why you came. So Lord, today we need, to, we need to respond immediately like the shepherds of old 
to your invitation, and we need to come into your presence and be changed and experience you. We need to leave from this place as believers, telling everyone what we've seen and experienced in you. So I pray this invitation brings you honor and glory as we come to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand and sing with us this morning. As the Holy Spirit of God leads you, we invite you to be the first that steps out to come today. Would you come? from wherever you are this morning would you come so much this morning if you would be seated when Jesus came when Jesus came there was a lot of darkness in the world Romans were in control they were keeping the people in bondage. There were false gods, idol worship, corrupt religious leaders. There was no prophet in the land, and there had been no word from God for over 400 years. The people wondered where is God? Has He forgotten us? He promised that He was going to send a Messiah. He promised that things were going to be different. Where's God? Why is there nothing but silence from heaven? Have you ever had an experience like that in your own life? A time in your life where it seemed that God in heaven had grown silent and there was no word. What they needed was a light of hope in a world of darkness, hopelessness. And John tells us this. In John 1, beginning in verse 1, we read these words as they come up on the screen I want you to focus on these words and I want you to read these with me this morning in the beginning was the word 
And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created through Him, and apart from Him, not one thing was created that has been created. Life was in Him, and that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, yet the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man named John who was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify about the light, so that all may believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. The true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was created through him, yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. The Word became flesh and took up residence among us. We observed His glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And Jesus came into this world. He came into this world. And He came for you and for me. He was the perfect sacrificial lamb. He died on the cross of Calvary, was buried in a borrowed tomb. For three days, there was darkness. But on that first Easter morning, Jesus rose from the grave. In great victory over sin and over Satan, Jesus spent some time with his disciples where he had commanded them to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe all things that he had commanded us. And he reminded that I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. And then Jesus ascended into heaven and the angel that announced his birth announced to the disciples, this same Jesus that you've seen going to heaven will come again in the same way that you've seen him depart. So, dear friends, it is because of that Jesus is coming again, not like he did the first time as a baby in Bethlehem, but when he comes again, he's coming as King of kings and Lord of lords. The Bible says... On that day, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. This morning, we've been reminded of the darkness. darkness everywhere and yet Jesus has come we read from God's word in Matthew 5 14 through 16 you are the light of the world a city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven.
it all started with just one light. One light. One light that was shared. And as one light was shared, it was shared with others all around the room. Do you understand this morning that no matter how much darkness we put in this room, that darkness cannot extinguish the light. No matter how much darkness is in our world or that we seem to have, nothing can extinguish the light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world. And because He is the light of the world, you and I are to be lights in a world. We're not to hide our light. We're not to dim our light. We're to boldly hold our light of the Lord Jesus Christ forth and say boldly, Jesus is my Lord. He's my Savior. He's my King. We serve Jesus, the light of the world. Merry Christmas. God bless you and your family. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you so much for the wonderful privilege of being able to experience your light. To know that that light shines brightly in our lives and it can shine brightly through our lives. It shines in our church. It can shine through our church. It shines in our families. It can shine through our families. Father, it is my prayer today that we leave this place recommitted once again to let our light shine in our communities, across the street, across the states, and across the seas. For your honor and for your glory, we thank you that you've come into this world for us. Lord, we honor you today for who you are and all that you've done. And the people of God gather together, say together, Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas.